Good morning, everyone. We will just wait a few minutes and get let everyone start to sign on, and then we'll get started. Okay, I think it is about 9.33. We've waited long enough. Uh, welcome to this morning's training, Branding New Year, New You. I'm going to do something a little different this morning in terms of I am going to share my screen. So let me stop this. I need to go to screen sharing. We'll share this. It's going to be crazy for just a minute, so hang on while I start the slideshow. There we go. David, do we see the slide, correct? We see the slide. Excellent. Again, welcome this morning to Branding New Year, New You. We're going to go over some branding items. We are going to show you some logos. We're going to show you a fun video uh, just to give you an idea of what it means to brand your company. So let's get started. So let's start with the very basics. What makes up your brand? Uh, it's more than your logo. It includes your colors and your fonts. It includes your voice, what your brand personality is. It includes your mission statement, and I want you to remember that your mission statement is not your history. This is probably the biggest um, stumbling block of nonprofits that I have in terms of they always want to tell about all their statistics and their history, and it's not. Your mission statement is your passion, your vision, and your story. What makes you do what you do and what's great about who you are. You also need to know your audience or audiences, meaning do you know who your um, target market is? And there may be more than one. It's called doing a brand persona, and it's knowing your value in the marketplace. So this is what makes up your brand. So the very first thing I'm going to do is play this video. So I've become addicted to TikTok. I'm not usually addicted to social media platforms. I usually go do my work, look at a couple things, move on. But TikTok has a lot of creative people and it has a lot of interesting things. And this was one that really caught my eye, which was poorly designed logos. And I'm going to play this for you. I hope it plays well. So I just got back home from college. And one thing I forgot about while I was away was our trash can. Specifically this logo on our trash cans, which is for United Materials Management. But it looks like it spells out something else. And then I started wondering, are any other logos as unfortunately designed as this one? And to answer my own question, yes, there are a lot of them. For example, this guy for junior jazz dance classes. You may have seen this one before if you went to middle school. There's also this one from a youth commission from the Catholic Church. I don't know how this didn't get caught. This guy comes from Montsat, a satellite company. Also seems like it'd be an easy catch. This one's for kids exchange. Space is very important. Poorly designed logos part two. And thank you to those who commented logos that they thought were funny. I've incorporated some of them into this video. This is a sign for Vermont maple syrup commented by SireZroid11. Interesting. Liam Cohen left a comment about this mega flix sign. Can't emphasize the importance of spaces enough. A few people left comments about this mask sign. Uh, if you're having trouble figuring out what's wrong with it, I'd say focus on the guy's ear. I saw a lot of comments about this mug from the University of North Texas. 
Uh, you can't blame the designer here. This is just unfortunate. And this is one of my personal favorites from a company called Locum. And this is one where you can blame the designer. It can barely even be called a logo. And it's probably the easiest one to catch so far. Poorly Designed Logos Part 9. This one's for Christian Life International. I've seen so many bad religious logos in this series. Is there something in the Bible against graphic designers? <laughs> Priority medical services? And that little pool of blood up there? That makes me very skeptical that this was a mistake. Now this isn't an actual logo, it's in GTA, but it's for click lovers, computer specialists. Now I don't play the game, I don't know where it is, but if you want to find it, go looking. This is actually a piece of bad logo history. Back in 2010, Gap changed their logo to this. And the die-hard Gap fans were appalled. It took them three days to change it back. Pedo Planet. You're probably thinking, there's no way someone actually named a company Pedo Planet. Well, think again. So, David, you said that the audio was low, and I apologize Very, for that. Yep. Um, but I think you got the, if you saw the logos that were going through, you saw that some of them made a very bad choice. Spacing is important, um, but it takes a lot of people looking at your logo um, to be sure it, it they don't see something that they shouldn't. So we want to talk about a strong brand image that plays an important role. Okay, improves recognition, it produces referrals, and it increases revenue. So the key for your customers is to recognize you consistently across the platforms. Uh, wherever there's, you are, whatever platform you're on, whatever you're doing, you need to be easily recognizable so that people know who you are and what your message is um, so that they can spot you. And you want to make sure that your company doesn't look different each time because then they won't know it's you. Uh, one cannot uh, underestimate the fact that uh, brand image and voice produces referrals from your your clients that you have and are happy with you and this increases your revenue so remember recognition referrals and revenue having that strong brand consistent image I just want to say David um, if you will watch the questions because I can't see them in screen sharing yep okay please ask any questions you want during the session uh, because uh, I don't like to go back I'd like to answer them at the time we'll also have time at the end for Q&A so when you're thinking of your brand, you want to review and ask yourself these questions. Has a function of your business become outdated? Meaning you may have started five years ago or 10 years ago and what you were then is really not what you are now. You evolve, your business evolves, it gets better, it changes. You need to ask the question, is anything outdated? And that goes to the same thing in terms of your technology, your website and what you're doing. What was okay five years ago on social media is no longer okay. The platforms have changed. They've changed what they've done. Mm -hmm. uh, also, you know, Google changes every day in what they do in terms of what platforms, the Google My Business, the SEO, you have to keep up with that and keep your brand fresh on those platforms. So is your market and what you're doing oversaturated and are you struggling to stand out? Do you feel your business reputation needs a fresh start? Do you have a decades old logo? Is it time to change? And we're going to look at some of the changes of logos in a minute. What has your company done in growth that has changed from when you originally started? And have you developed a new voice and overall a new tone that requires a new appearance? Ask yourself these questions. So here is just three examples of where a logo started and where it is now. And you can see, and I don't have the years for these, but you can see where Starbucks started and then it evolved and then it evolved, and then it refined itself and then it became a very specific iconic green logo. You can see where BMW changed and it hasn't changed a lot where Starbucks has changed a lot. Um, just around BMW in the middle they got a little off track with this one right here the BMW that says nothing to me but you know who they are by their logo and Heineken 
also has redefined where they had all this flowery stuff. They've defi defined down to just one image that defines them and their font. Now we're going to look at four different logos. And this is a test, so David, you'll have to see um, what everyone says. So each of these yep. four logos has a hidden message in it. And we'll start, I think everyone should know the FedEx one. Can anyone tell me what the uh, hidden piece in the FedEx logo is? And we'll wait because there's a little bit of delay here. You can tell me if anyone has the answer to that. I will do that. So t while we're waiting, take your time and look at each of these and let me know if you know what the hidden message is. Each one of them has a hidden message in it, um, which is two of, our, two of them are obvious. One is kind of obvious, um, but we will go through them. Are we getting anything? So Kiara says it looks like an arrow. That is correct. We'll start with FedEx. If you look at FedEx, if you look at the EX, look where the spacing is between the E and the X. There's an arrow there that promotes forward thinking, promotes getting you there. That was very, um, what word am I looking for? This was not a mistake. This was what they wanted. They wanted it to be a very clear arrow saying that they're going forward, they're getting places. So you're absolutely right, Kira. Um, now we'll look at Amazon. I'm sure, sure that all of you are going to say it means smile, but it actually isn't. It gives you that impression. But what Amazon is telling you is they carry every product from A to Z. So it's very subliminal, but that was the purpose of that arrow, not just the smile part, but was telling you that it's, it's, it's doing, carrying everything from A to Z. Now we're going to look at the Baskin and Robbins logo. And if you look, it says BR. But if you look closer, it says 31 because Baskin and Robbins used to be Baskin and Robbins 31 flavors. And they wanted to keep that in their new logo. So they made the, the part of the B and the part of the R into 31. So it's subliminal. Um, LG, uh, the one on the left is the new one, which is the, the red button. And it's really a face. It's telling you they are interested in you. It's got a nose and a circle and a mouth and an, and an eye, and it's, it's winking at you. So those are all ones that carry hidden messages. It doesn't mean it's good or bad or otherwise or what you want to do, but I'm just sharing some of the logos with you. So logos evolve. So now we're also going to talk about outdated fonts. These are a list of fonts that we all use, but they really look at the fact that these are outdated. If you're using any of these fonts, you should reconsider what you're doing and what fonts you're using on your website and in your print. We used to all go to uh, our Word document and there's all these different fonts in there, but most of them are truly outdated. Uh, the new fonts really go from fonts.google.com, which you can go directly to, and see all of the different fonts. If you're working in any uh, platform that you have now, WordPress, Wix, or any of those, you will find that they have fonts you have no idea what the names are. You can find what they are on fonts.google.com because those are the new ones. Those are the ones they're using. And there's a website called fontpair.co where it will help you pair these Google fonts if you're making your logo yourself. It's great help, but keep in mind, People know that it's dated because you're using Comic Sans, because you're using Sans Serif, because you're using Courier New. I didn't put Sans Serif in here, but it's a very old font. A uh, New Roman Times is very old. So be careful. This is your image and what it says about you, what fonts you are using. Also, colors. There is a website called colors, C O O L O R S dot C O where you can go and generate uh, palettes. And you can generate and generate and generate until you get to the point where it's like, I like those. And down in the left hand corner, I've put a few statistics for you. Um, 90 for, and this is according to top brands. 95% use one or two colors, not too busy. 33% use a blue color. 29% use a red color. 
28% use a black or gray scale, 13% use yellow or gold, and only 0.05% use more than two colors. So think about your logo being too busy and it being immediately recognizable. And this is a place where you can go and help you define what colors look good together. One of the things we help our clients do is we help them, Canva, if you're not using it already, is free to you. Nonprofits can get a free brand account. There's a pro account, I think it's called a pro account, sorry. But there's some interesting things within Canva that you can use. If you look over on the left-hand side, they've up their green. You can put your brand kit in here and you can have a content planner. You can create a team and you can put things in folders. It gives you regular size. It puts fonts in for you. It gives you free pictures and purchase pictures. It's a great way for a small business to get to great content and be, be able to make their posts, their content, or whatever they're sharing online. So here, if you go to the brand kit part, you can put your different logos because you may have an assortment of three or four logos that you use for you because you have to have the icon that you use on all your posts. You have to have the big one that you put at letterhead. You can put them all in here. You can then go and put your brand color palettes in here and put your brand fonts in here. So you don't necessarily have to create that document locally for people to get to, and you can as a company create the document. But here in Canva, it's all stored here for you. So everyone who's working in Canva and creating things knows what to use for creating pictures and colors and logos when they're pushing things out um, online. So when we're thinking about our brand and we want to know what people think about our brand, the best thing to do is perhaps ask your customers, do a survey. So your peers, you know, if you belong to networking groups or what you do, get feedback on what your brand is. Does it, what they see match up with your, what your vision is and how can you make that better so the two can coincide with each other? So what we want to do when we're thinking about our brand is we want to audit our brand because our brand is made up of a lot of things. Our internal brand is our voice, our values, our company culture. Our external brand is our logo, our color palette, which shows on our website and social media. I should have put fonts there also. That's external. And then it's our customer experience, what our sales process is, how we support our clients, and what services we provide for that support. So all of these things you could do some type of a survey for. Don't get it too laundered. I don't believe in a survey that should be more than seven questions. And if you want to have it quantitative, you need to give them the answers to choose and maybe leave one as an open-ended so that then you can, can put percentages on what people think and that it will help you. You need to look at your website analytics. You need to review your social data analytics. Analyze your competition on the things you think you need to do better. And it's always good to do a SWOT analysis, which is our strengths, weakness, opportunities, and threats, and how those play into what your brand message is. It's very quiet, David. No questions? Not yet. Okay. So first you want to pull all your elements together somewhere so that you can look at them all the different logos you're using, any icons you're using, textures and design, accents, typography, which is fonts. If you have a specific photos that you use and do they have a style, what your color scheme is, what is your tagline, is it current and does it need to be updated, and what your mission and story is. So all of that. We need to understand our content, what our messaging and tone is, how we put titles on our pages, our blog headlines, both of those page titles and blog headlines fall into our messaging and tone, social posts also, and web screen. You know, take screenshots, put them together, and then review it as a company or as two people or as you. 
And then you, also the marketing is your packaging, what you're putting on your letterheads, your business cards, your emails. Um, any of those things need to reflect back to what your branding is. So down at the bottom, you can see um, Hootsuite does offer a social media template piece that you can download from them that could help you. It might be a little more than you want, depending on how far along you are in branding. But do the pieces you can and move forward in that. So once you have them all together, make that list. So when you look at your logo, needs updating, doesn't need updating. My icons are okay. My texture design accents, they're okay. My typography is old. It's been 10 years. I, I was using, you know, Mon Monistrat or Veranda, and I really need to update that font. Is our photo style okay? Um, our color scheme, it can be refreshing because each year um, a new color is put out as the color of the year that's new. And, you know, that lime green was like five years ago that was really in. We did that, and we moved to the blue last year, which was the color of the year. And I will probably stay with the blue, white, and gray. I like that. Is your tagline okay? Is the tagline you're re using reflect your company's needs and what they're doing? So that tagline, I help my customers. I tell them to use a book called Duct Tape Marketing. And Chapter 2 is called Discover Your Core Message. And you can run your tagline through it, and it will help you redefine it. Mission and story. Are you telling your history or are you telling your passion? Does it need updating? That goes along with the messaging and tone, and we're going to get to a spreadsheet in a minute that helps talk about that. And once that messaging and tone needs updating, then you have to start pushing it to the titles for your pages and your blog headlines and your social posts. So you want, when it comes to tone, you want to specify the types of words that you want to use or not use. So. This is just a graphic. I'm not saying to use them. Words like free, share, whole world, calls. We don't want to use telephony, peer-to-peer, -peer, VoIP, bill. We don't want to use words that are too industry-specific that people won't understand. You and your business understand it, but what is the average person or your client using those words to find you? What words are good? So um, you can create this voice chart, chart, and this is how it looks. It has a brand attribute, then we describe that attribute, and then we say what we do want to do and what we don't want to do with each attribute. So in this example, confident, committed, and reliable is what they're saying that is here. So they de describe confidence. We are leaders in our field, and our people are some of the best and brightest at what they do. We want to speak with authority challenge the status quo, and introduce new concept, concepts. We do not want to express uncertainty. We do not want to present information without data to back it up, and we do not want to speak passively. So each one of these boxes, and you can have more than three words, you need to go through and describe what it is that word means to you and your company and the do's and don'ts of it. Here is a second example where they have passion, quirky, irreverent, and authentic. So they have taken quirky and really more defined it as they're going down and putting their voices in. But you want to do this and you, you want to make sure that people understand what the story or what that voice is that you're trying to get across. If you work with employees, it's helping them understand the vision of the company and being in the right voice, pushing out to your clients or prospective clients. So creating your company brand, um, here's some guidelines, documentation, and assets folder. We talked about putting some of this into the Canva where everyone can get to it. Otherwise, you can create a folder somewhere that everyone can get to. You want to state your great brand's story. You want to write it so everyone reads it and everyone understands it. You want your official brand name. You know, Wisecough Consulting is Wisecough Consulting. It's also Wise, technically it's Wisecough Consulting LLC. I don't believe I need to put LLC on it. The only person that really matters to is the government and how they're taxing me. So it's Wisecough Consulting. Add that tagline. 
all things technical and social, defining what you, who you are, your logo and its guidelines for recognition. Because you can have two or three, you have your main logo, you have the logo that goes on for social media, you have the logo that goes on your website, but you can have two or three that all fall into the same guidelines and where you're using them. You want to define your brand's color palette, which will come from your logo and from other things you are doing. You want to define what your font or typography is so it's consistent. And you may not think that's an issue, but a picture is worth a thousand words. And people do see and understand and recognize certain fonts for certain brands. And then it's defining your brand voice so everyone speaks in the same voice and what your clients or prospective clients hear is the same thing about your company. So that was my very brief overview of branding, and I would love to take questions if anyone has any. So Claudia asked if the presentation will be sent to participants. I responded it will be available on YouTube as a video. Correct. What we usually do with our Friday trainings is we take it, we um, create a video recording, and then we put it up to our YouTube channel so that you can all get to it and refer to it. So yes, it will be available not in hard copy, but in video format. If you really, really, really need a hard copy, you can email me um, and I will send you one. It's not a problem. That's it so far. Okay, so I just want you to know that I really appreciate you spending Fridays with me. I know we're only doing one Friday a month now. Uh, last year was great, but it was a lot of work. But each of the Fridays, you'll get a half an hour of training. We will do questions and answers, and then we will put it up on YouTube. And I you did get, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Virginia, there's one question. Um, when working with a new client, is it a good idea to provide a branding audit template? When working with a new client, is it good to provide a brand audit template? You mean if you're doing the branding for that client, I need to understand the basis of that. Yes. I'll, I'll give her a second. Okay. And I'll and continue. Then John First. asks, what is the one branding tip you recommend? It's because there's not just one. Consistency, period. Consist if mm -hmm. I have to pick one, it's consistency and continue to be consistent. It doesn't matter. You know, you could saw the evolutions of the logos, but once you've designed on your logo, you need to push it out across all of your online platforms and all your local stuff. Consistency so people know who you are and what you're doing. Still waiting on Talisha to... When working with a new client, is it a good idea to write a brand audit template? Templates, yes. So I don't know if she's talking about her or if she's doing branding for a client, so I, I'm not sure how to answer that one. I'm sorry. But it, okay, so let me answer two ways. One, if you are a branding company and you're working with client, I would absolutely have a document that you can work through with them or give them to start and you can help them with it. That was essentially your question. Oh, okay. So yes, I would absolutely put my, I would make like an ebook, you know, and put down what the steps are you want them to take, what the questions you want them to answer are and take them on that journey of creating their brand so they can understand that it's not just, oh, this is a cute logo, I'm going to put it up. Um, it's that That is good and bad. When I Sometimes when I do logos, I will go out to a company called designhill.com, and it's a crowdsourcing platform where you can order all kinds of things, but you can hire them to do a logo. It's $250. And what they do is then probably 50 to 100 different designers submit logos. And I can tell you about 50% of them are crap. But then you can get to the ones that you start to like. And if you like three or four of them, you can start working with those designers through the platform to maybe have a color tweak, to maybe have a font tweak, and then get to the point where this is the one you want and they provide them to you and you've paid for that. And that really helps in terms of getting to where you want to be. That doesn't mean you shouldn't work with a graphic designer. I love graphic designers. Uh, but this is just a way, instead of getting one person's point of view, 
you get a whole group of point of view, and there might be two you really like that you can tweak into one, and it's a great tool. Yep, that answered her question. She said thank you, and I don't see any more questions. Okay, so we will be back here with a follow-up to this on March 19th. Um, what is March 19th one, David? I don't have it in front of me, but it's... I it's, do not either. I it's a continuation of the branding um, theme for the two months to get you started for the year. Uh, we look forward to seeing you. You can find it on uh, Wisecoff Consulting Education. It's there. Again, our YouTube channel has the previous... This is Friday. It's usually up by Monday. And if you absolutely need... A PowerPoint of this, just give me an email at virginia at wisecoffconsulting.com and I will send to you. I appreciate, uh, I'm going to end my screen share, come back to where I am. Here we are. Um, and again, thank you for visiting us today, and we will see you next Friday, or Friday, uh, March 19th. Have a Thanks great everyone. day. Bye. Bye.